Explore Museums Chicago. I've done on one on Explore Museums of Washington, one on Detroit of all places. Um, I want to do one someday on Pittsburgh. A lot of people are like Pittsburgh. Oh yes, Pittsburgh has some great old museums. Uh, the Carnegie Museums are in Pittsburgh. And what is perhaps the best children's museum in the US is in Pittsburgh, the Carnegie Science Center. Uh, you, you could take kids there all day, uh, every week for a year, and they would never get bored in the Science Center in, uh, in, in, in Pittsburgh. Anyway, um, there's also a planetarium. So, uh, but Chicago was number two. I've done the class on a couple of times on, on Washington, D.C., which is mostly about the Smithsonian, which again is tough to beat. Number two, in my opinion, is Chicago. Probably number three is New York. A lot of New Yorkers are aghast to hear me say that, but that's my opinion. It's entirely subjective. Um, let me know if you learn anything in my classes. I am your guide, uh, Russ Eames from Harrisonburg, Virginia. It's in the Shenandoah Valley. I'm about a two hour drive from the Smithsonian. I'm about a two hour flight ride, a plane ride to Chicago. Uh, and I'll tell you a little more about if you're, if you want to go to Chicago to visit the city or to visit the museums, I'll show you how to get there. Russ, the guide to get set up.io is my, uh, email address and you will get some notes with some links to these museums at the end so don't worry if you if you missed it uh, we're going to talk about uh, the top museums in chicago we'll review the the websites of the five top museums maybe watch a little bit of a video um, this is one place where there aren't as many good videos a lot of museums have great videos about them Chicago, I couldn't find very many that I liked or they weren't as well done. So I only have one short one today. That by the way is in, that's, that's the old engine of the Chicago, of this California Zephyr. Um, and that was there when I was a kid. Uh, the successor to uh, the Ze Zephyr actually went through Hinsdale, Illinois when I lived there in 1969. It was before on the Burlington route right here, the Burlington Northern Railroad was still in existence then. I don't know, maybe it is now, but it was still doing passenger train. This is pre-Amtrak. Amtrak, Amtrak uh, started a few years later. Anyway, they have this. You can go, go through it when you're at the Art Institute of Chicago. They have some of the coolest things at the Art Institute. Uh, the five best that I mentioned in Chicago are the Art Institute of Chicago, the Few Museum, that is Natural History, the Adler Planetarium. These are in no order, by the way. Uh, Museum of Science and Industry, and the Shedd Aquarium. I'm going to talk a little bit about each of them. If any of you have been there, please raise your hand, a virtual hand raise, or um, I'll pause and say comments, chime in. Last time we had a great session. A whole bunch of Chicagoans were there, and they could add some interesting tidbits about the museums. It was a lot of fun. Um, let, me, let me, so I'll show you these, but I'm going to start by showing you them on a map. So uh, if you don't know Chicago, there's Chicago on a map uh, of, of the U.S. <laughs> In case you don't know, it's uh, on Lake Michigan. It is called the Windy City, and that is because being on Lake Michigan, it gets very strong winds. And um, I will say uh, the winds are, you know, just the strong winds. But if you're there in the winter, they are bitter cold winds and they're uh, some of the coldest temperatures I can think I've ever experienced was being what was walking across Northwestern university campus in February uh, with a bitter uh, wind coming off the lake. So uh, Chicago, the windy city has earned its reputation. Anyway, we're going to zoom in here a bit on the city. This is the center of the city um, and the center of the city, it, the very center of downtown is called the loop. It's called the loop because there is an L train that goes around it. So Chicago doesn't have subways like New York does. It has an L train, elevated train, and they, the tracks go above the city and they form a big loop in the center and that's called the loop. Uh, also, there is the Chicago River, which flows in here. There's another river that comes from up, up this way. Um, Goose Island, if you ever heard of Goose Island beer, that's what it's named after. Um, some of these things on the lake here, I think these are not natural. This is man-made. Uh, Chicago was the scene for some world fairs and some of the things, uh, the, I think some of the ideas of the Chicago museums came from previous world fairs in Chicago. 
anyway, uh, I think there is a building somewhere preserved from one of the world fairs in this area. But just to give you an idea, this is the center of the city and uh, Roosevelt Road comes into the middle. Uh, there's Chinatown in the south. And um, let's zoom in a little bit closer. And this is uh, Lincoln Park right here, Grant Park. And the Art Institute of Chicago is on the north end of that. The um, Union Station is right down here. Let's see. One of these things says it's Union Station. It's right down here. And I remember as a teenager being able to take the Burlington Northern commuter line into the city, into Union Station, and being able to hop off and walk to the Art Institute. Uh, that was one fun thing as a kid. You could be independent. It was before I could drive, I'd go with a couple of friends or with my family members down there. Anyway, um, so that's the Art Institute is located right there. Farther south down here, this is, uh, let's see if we can zoom in on it. This is the Shedd Aquarium and the Adler Planetarium. Let's see if they label themselves. So there's a Shedd Aquarium and, oops, it's, you know, it keeps wanting to try to give me driving directions, which I do not want to do today. We're not going to do driving directions. We just want the plain old Shedd Aquarium. Thanks. One of the downsides of using the Maps app on my computer. Let's get back here to Chicago and Shedd Aquarium. All right, zoom in there, pull in. It is out on the lake. And what's really cool though, is the Adler Planetarium, which is out here on the lake. And you get an absolutely fabulous view from the Shedd Aquarium right here. This is on Lake Michigan. And it's not saying that it's the Lake Michigan. Let's pull it up. Uh, Adler Planetarium. I'll get the label on there. Adler Planetarium. There we go. Oh, that's not it. I don't think that's it. That must be another Adler Planetarium. Well, let's go back to the shed anyway. Um, and then south of it, if you this kind of a complex, what's kind of cool about here is that um, right, this is the Field Museum right here. See if I can get a if I can get a label on that. Nope, not not labeling it either. Let's back it up. Slight technical difficulties today. There we go. Field Museum. There we are. Oops, it's showing me a picture. That's not what I wanted to do. There it is right there. There's the, the Field Museum. And so these three, Adler Planetarium, Shedd Aquarium, and the Field Museum are all in this kind of triangle right here. So it's they're all worth a, a day or a greater part of a day. So it's not like this is I wouldn't necessarily suggest a one-day visit to all three. You could do if you wanted to, but that gives you an idea where, where they are just south of it is Soldier Field where the Bears play. And that is a new Soldier Field because Soldier Field, to my recollection, wasn't there and was didn't look like that when I was a kid. Uh, I never watched the Bears play. Farther south down here is where you will find the Museum of Science and Industry. There we go, right there. Oops, and I see it keeps on trying to give me driving directions. No, thank you. We just want we just want the plain old uh, Chicago Museum of Science and Industry. And oh, come on, I don't want to waste all your time trying to get my map to navigate. There we go. All right, let's zoom in on that. That's farther south, so you need to take public transportation down to see the Field Museum. Uh, oh, sorry, the, the Chicago Museum of Science and Industry. Okay, there it is. And I did show you, by the way, that when we were up here before, closer to um, the Shedd Aquarium Field Museum is the Art Institute of Chicago. Let's zoom in there. There it is, Art Institute of Chicago. Um, this is Chicago Harbor out here. And this is... Grant Park right here along the front. And I actually, there's some really nice hotels along here. So if you want to come into the city, 
Um, you can stay right along the outside of Grant Park, excellent hotels. And there's Art Institute of Chicago. We'll be looking at that in a second. Um, don't you love it? They got Ida B. Wells Drive. Yes, I love Ida B. Wells, early um, African-American journalist and early uh, kind of muckraking journalist too. If you want to come in from O'Hare, O'Hare is out here and you can take, there's an L train that goes all the way in from, from uh, O'Hare. And my wife and I, last time we visited Chicago, we did not rent a car. We flew into O'Hare. We took the L all the way into the city, right near our hotel. Very safe, very easy to do in case you're ever worried. So that's a bit of a location of where these museums are. But let's go back to talk about them. The Art Institute of Chicago, Field Museum, Adler Planetarium, Museum of Science and Industry. And I'll show you, let's find the, oh, here we go. We got it. Okay. Let's look at each of them a bit. All right. This, we're going to start at the Museum of Science and Industry, which is the one that's far south. Um, the Chicago Museum of Science and Industry is known for having a couple, I mean, it's just, it's worth a day. It's worth a day. Um, it is still probably my favorite museum in the U.S. of this kind of thing about science, industry, whatever. Um, it beats, in my opinion, the, uh, the Museum of American History in, at the Smithsonian. So that's just my, 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 my feeling about it. But what's cool about the Museum of Science and Industry are the special exhibits that it has. And let's find the special exhibits. Uh, one of them is this, oops, there, we just passed it. One is that, um, I'm gonna stop here. One is this, which is the U-505 submarine. It is a captured German U-boat from the Second World War. And they brought it all the way in to Chicago Harbor. Um, they eventually brought it up into the museum. Uh, and I remember walking through it as a kid. It is really cool. Uh, but also, um, let's see, they're gonna show us, uh, let's see if we can get the next things. That's the number one thing that they, they have this here. They have the Burlington Northern, uh, sorry, the, the California Zephyr is there. So you can walk through that from like the 19, like the 1930s. The first really famous high-speed train. Then they have the coal mine. And um, let's see if we can get this up to show the coal mine here. Let's just, we'll just search coal mine. Uh, they have what is like a working coal mine. And uh, some of these exhibits, like the coal mine costs extra. So, uh, but they actually take you underground on an elevator. Um, they built this thing in 1933. So this exhibit's been around a long time. And I, again, I remember as a kid taking the tour of the, uh, of the coal mine. So you go down in it, you find all about how a working coal mine operates. Uh, and anyway, it's a lot of fun. It's a little, if you're claustrophobic, I wouldn't do it. Um, but it, it is really cool to learn about how it works. So you've got the, the um, submarine, the California Zephyr, the coal mine. And the fourth thing they have that is just so cool is they have a train exhibit. All right. I didn't spell exhibit right. That's why it wouldn't tell me that it was there. Uh, let's see. It's not showing us. Let's try HO train. Uh, okay. They're not doing uh, their, their search engine doesn't work as I imagine would be had a lot of, had an easy time doing this last time. Um, let's try the explore. Uh, let's find that the, they have this gigantic train layout. It's the kind of place that I would spend hours as a kid. These are some of the, 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 uh, timed exhibits. In other words, they're not there always. So, um, there's this science fiction to science fact robot block party art of the brick. That's all about, I think, building with Legos, um, black, black creativity and architecture. There's a black creativity jury dark. Uh, there is the coal mine that I mentioned. Um, dissect an eye. Don't you love that? Uh, take flight. 
um, they have got, you can actually walk through like a, like a um, airplane. Um, there's the U-505 submarine. You can also take a tour of the U-505. And um, down here, they should have the train layout. Come on, where's the train layout? There it is, the great train story. Uh, this thing is huge. Um, I would, this is where the first place I would go as a kid and look at this layout from above um, because you can, you can, there's a little kid watching it to give you an idea. 3,500 square feet, that's like 50 by 70. It is enormous. And uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a, and so these are all stuff that like a, I would have fun in as, a, as an adult, as a grandfather, but I would love to take grandkids to see. So um, I, that's one reason why I just really love the, the uh, Museum of Science and Industry in Chicago. Those four things, especially the U505, the coal mine, the uh, Zephyr, and the train layout. But if, and by the way, you, if you want to follow, if you follow this link, I'll give you the link to the museum and you go to this ex explore where I am. I need to mute someone here. Okay. If you come down here to the U505 onboard tour, um, this actually takes you there. Now you can walk through it and there's a whole uh, fascinating. There's, there's what you see inside. Look at all those valves and, and gauges. Um, it's also not a place if you're really severely claustrophobic that you want to go in. You can see they brought it inside now. Um, but you can take a virtual tour of this. There's a really cool set of um, stories you can follow through and read right now online, all about how they captured this U-boat and how they brought it to Chicago. So anyway, then there's a whole transportation gallery. Again, if you're someone like me that loved this stuff as a kid, I still love it. Um, there is uh, a model of the Wright brothers. There must be a lot. There's a lot of models of the Wright brothers uh, throughout America, trains, everything you might want. Anyway, that's the Museum of Science and Industry. Anybody got a question about the Museum of Science and Industry? The tickets are not, are not cheap to get in. And like, if you want to go in, you have to... Um, get a timed ticket and let's see, I'm just, I'm looking up the price for one adult here, uh, 12 and above. Uh, it's 2195 and I'm pretty sure they don't have, I checked this out, they don't have a senior discount, which is kind of disappointing. Um, uh, I, I thought the show was on the Chicago Museum today. No. This is museums in Chicago, yes, Carolyn. Okay, all right, I'll stay right here. Thank you. Yep. Uh, so this Museum of Science and Industry in Chicago, not cheap. Uh, these museums all cost anywhere from 20 to 40 bucks to visit, and you can get a pass for all of them. So you can get a multi-day pass to go to all of them for about $120 to $150. And some of them do have senior discounts. So that's Museum of Science and Industry. Any more questions? It is Probably, I'll just be biased, my favorite fun sort of science, that kind of thing in a museum in the United States. Okay, continuing my, bi my, my biases. And again, this is, I, I'm, I'm allowed to be opinionated uh, because opinions are totally subjective. You don't have to prove anything. What my oldest son always used to have a joke when he's a little kid, he'd tell people your opinion is wrong. Anyway. Uh, we're going to go to another one of my favorites, my favorite art museum in the United States. So we're going to go to the Art Institute of Chicago. There it is. Um, wow, look at that. Igshan Adams, Desire Lines. That, that must be a current new exhibit. Um, the Art Institute is, a, so if you could, you need a day at the Museum of Science and Industry. So here's suggestion, fly to Chicago, go downtown and do this like in March. So this is before it gets too warm, before it's big tourist season, but it's not, you don't get those bitter cold winds off the lake. You can, by the way, get a snowstorm in March all the way up into April, just warning you in case it happens. But if you're in Chicago, you know, you can get mass public transportation around the museums. My, my philosophy is go to museums in the winter. So go to Chicago museums in the winter. Uh, the Art Institute is my favorite um, art museum in America. And these are some current exhibits. Uh, 
this is Morrison Company. The, the this is a, a I think it's about a design company, design business. Uh, and there's, there's a whole special exhibit about him. Uh, they've got Life and Afterlife in Ancient Egypt. That's a special exhibit. Uh, they've got this one that I just now saw for the first time, this Igshan Adams Desire Lines. Um, and I've never heard of this guy doing the Rutenberg, Rutenberg Contemporary Photography Series. Um, here's more. The Tiffany Window at the Art Institute of Chicago, Nancy Rubens, uh, A New View of African Art. So, and then there's a special one, the Deering Family Galleries. And then there's a few coming up. Uh, Naughty Nymphs in the Courtyard of the Favorites. That's an interesting one. I wonder what that is. So, oh, and they've got a Cezanne coming up. Okay, so the Art Institute is known for its French Impressionists, of whom Cezanne is one of the most famous. Um, and they have some famous Cezannes at the Art Institute of Chicago. These, I, these aren't necessarily ones that are there. They might have some other that have been brought in. But what I want to show you, um, just for fun, I'm going to show you my favorite painting in the Art Institute of Chicago. I saw it the first time I was there. It blew my mind. It still blows my mind. By the way, you can go down here and look at the, if you go into, so I, I hit the collection right here and you can search and there's like 15,000 things you could find for because it's a huge museum. They're not, all, you know, museums don't always have everything on display all the time. They rotate exhibits in and out, but they have some interesting um, categories here, cityscapes, impressionism, animals, essentials, African diaspora, fashion, Chicago artists, pop art. There's one, if you go to cityscapes, this is the one I'm going to show you. Well, it is, there it is. This is my favorite painting in the Art Institute of Chicago. Um, Paris, it, it's, it's English title is Paris Street, Rainy Day, 1877, by the frame, famous uh, Gustave Kayabat. And um, this this painting has always captured my imagination because you feel like what the way he did it, you feel like you're standing there and these people are approaching you and the proportion of everything is really proper. And um, this is in the newer, the quote unquote newer Paris after they've rebuilt the city with its grand boulevards. And like the guy with his big handlebar mustache and his, his wife walking next to him and with their umbrellas and who knows what they're looking at. And of course, a rainy day allows his colors to be more subdued. So he is in the French Impressionist school, but a little bit more realism in it. Um, but the, what's cool about this painting is it is huge. It is like six by eight feet. So the figures in here, they're life-size figures. They're not like, you're not looking at someone far away. They're life-size. And I don't know, the last time I was in the Art Institute, it was, it was on loan. The time before that, it was at the front of the Impressionist French artists of the mid or second half of the 19th century collection on display because it is impressive in its size and just it's it. I bought a, a poster of it when I was in high school, put it on the wall. I have a postcard of it now. It still captures my imagination. So that's Kayabat's painting. But there are a lot of other famous ones here. Um, and let's see if they show you. Uh, there's Walter Ellison's train station. This is more of the, uh, oh, I wish I had Fred Carpenter here to remind me of this, this school of art. I don't have him here. I'm trying to find one that is, um, well, it's actually not a cityscape. Um, maybe we'll search for it and come across it. Um, and it's one you all weren't will know when I show it to you. Some of these are photographs, by the way. This is just, this is fabulous to look at the cityscapes. But let me go back here. Um, and we'll go back one more time. So in the collections. Okay, and we'll go to Impressionism. So this is what I was going to show you about Impressionism. So these are all the famous paintings they have. There's my there's one of my favorite Renoirs. Um, I also love this Monet over here, the Saint Lazare Station. Saint Lazare Station. Um, scrolling down, let's see if we can find my second favorite Renoir, which is that's a beautiful one right there. In um, look at this Van Gogh. This is one I've never seen before. I don't remember this one. Uh, there's a famous boat, the luncheon of the boaters. Uh, he's done a Renoir did several of them. This one right here, lunch at the restaurant Fournay's is also one of my all time favorite painter paintings. My brother showed this one to me when he was explaining 
uh, impression is. And the impressionists were fascinated with light reflections, all the things that light could do. Again, this is the best collection of French impressionism outside of France. By the way, look at that chrysanthemums by Renoir right there. Let me, I, I went over that too fast. Isn't that beautiful? Um, let me scroll up and show you one other painting that's here. By the way, this one here, Monet's stack of wheat. I think there's a collection of these here. There, he painted the stack of wheat at different times of the day and caught the the effects of light. Um, then there's the famous cliff walk. Oh boy, at Poorville, that is really a, a absolutely fabulous painting. They've got paintings by Manet, Monet, Degas, Cezanne. Um, Homer, Winslow Homer, uh, didn't think of him as an impressionist, but he is, I guess he is considered an impressionist school. Uh, and there's one more I'm trying to show you up here. There's another Homer, the, the, the herring net. That's a very famous one. These two sisters is a beautiful Renoir. Renoir really like these splashes of color, like throwing in a big chunk of red just for you to see. This one is, this is the one I wanted to find. This is called um, the, a Sunday on La Grande Jatte. It has another name in French. Uh, this is done with, this is pointillism. This painting is also huge. It is probably, I'm going to take a guess, 12 by 14 feet, but it might be bigger. It, it occupies an entire yeah. wall. Yeah, between the steps. You go up the steps and there it is. Yes. Yeah. Uh it is, is gigantic. And it, if you, if you, this is what you see when you stand back. And when you get zoom in, you can see it's all done with little points of, of paint. That's how he painted it in little points. It is absolutely fabulous. Uh, so this is one of the most famous Russ, paintings in the Art Institute. Yes. Is that Sunday in the park with George? Here? Uh-huh. Yes. Is that? Um, it's called A Sunday on La Grande Jatte, but it uh -huh. had this is Surratt is the painter. Another name? I don't I I don't know the French name. Um I wish they had it here. It was Sunday in the Park with George was a, was a Stephen Sondheim musical that was um, inspired by this this painting. By, this by the painting. way, by the way, if you want to see the American Gothic, it is there, at least uh -huh. if unless it's out on loan. <laughs> uh, I kind of blew my mind as a kid to come across the real American Gothic there. So that's the Art Institute. That's just a little touchstone on the art institute they have art from around the world through the centuries um it used to be you could go in by a donation so if you were going to spend an hour you didn't feel like you had to pay a regular admission um but really it's worth a day it is worth a day it is my favorite art museum in the u.s any more comments or questions about the art institute of chicago By the way, they also have a great collection of um, surrealist paintings, paintings. And um, there was another, another uh, artist whose name I'm trying to remember here. Maybe I'll come up with it in a second. Um, let's see, pop art, Chicago artists. Uh, they're showing here some of their most famous one, this cityscapes uh, that, oh, here it is, Nighthawks by Edward Hopper. Uh, this is one of Amer all time American famous iconic paintings, and it is there if you want to see this Edward Hopper. Um, it's kind of cool. I like it myself. Takes me back to a time that I wasn't alive in, but my parents were and kind of gives me an idea of what they were always talking about. Let's see. He did this one in 1942. Yeah. Any more questions know. about the Art Institute? Or comments? Okay, let's, uh, in, so we can keep moving. Let's move on to the Field Museum. Um, the Field Museum is a natural history museum. It is also a fabulous natural history museum. In my opinion, it rivals the natural history museum of in Washington, DC. Like many natural history museums, it does have things like, um, you know, dinosaur bones and uh, various types of natural wonders that you can see around the world. Um, 
here's a, what you can see in the general admission. Here's some of the current ones. You have the Jurassic Oceans, Monsters of the Deep. Um, by the way, if you go into the Griffin Hall, there's where you can see T-Rex because all kids love to see, and 65-year-old kids love to see dinosaurs, bones. I still love it. I'm a person that will stroll through a museum and read just about every bo information board. Um, I happen to be a speed reader, so that helps me get into these kinds of places. Um, but they have a, a great dinosaur collection, dinosaur bone collection. That's included with a basic admission. Um, there's Inside Ancient Egypt, Pokagon, Potawatomi, Black Ash Baskets. Okay, so these are uh, Indian tribes of the Midwest, the Potawatomi, I believe I've got that right. They've got one on meteorites. Granger Hall of Gems, what natural history museum would not be complete without a Hall of Giant Gems? A Hall of Birds, again, ditto, I could say the same thing here, but here's an interesting one about plant medicine. That is really cool. Then there's the McCormick Hall of the Ancient Americans. I'm personally very fascinated in the history of American Indians and the, Amer of the original Americans. Um, look at this, the Abbott Hall of Conservation, Restoring Earth. So again, another museum that is worth an entire day. Anybody got a comment about the Field Museum? Or a question? Again, it's not cheap. The unfortunate thing. Yes. Um, it's not, I don't know, in that museum, I've been looking at a lot of commentaries on the ancients in Midwest, especially, and the Mormons say that... Yeah, unfortunately, Carolyn, we lost you. I did want to say that... Um, I'm looking at out-of-state admission. You can get an all-access pass that will let you into everything. You can get a discovery pass that will give you the basic admission plus a 3D movie. They have a 3D movie there. Um, or to one of the four ticketed exhibits. And I believe things like the, the uh, submarine is a ticketed exhibit. And then if you want to get into the basic exhibitions, just $27 for out-of-state adult. Uh, in this museum, if you're from Illinois, like if you click on Illinois residents, you'll find out it costs less. And if you are a Chicago resident, you are really in luck. It's only $18 for the general admission, 32 for all access pass. If you are in the area in Illinois, Chicago area, you can get a year long pass. I think to all the museums or a member, you get in memberships to individual museums might be worth it. That's, a, I, I have a dream someday, take some of my grandkids to Chicago for a week and we'll visit museums. Keeping in mind time, let's move on to the Shedd Aquarium. So this is then not, this is on the lake shore, not where they built out. Uh, again, I've been to all these places as a kid, so they're really worth it. I love aquariums. Uh, one of the coolest things about aquariums is you can stand, you know, and look through the glass and see something like that, that we're seeing right there through the glass. It's huge. Um, the tickets to the Shedd, let's just check here since I'm seeing it. Um, and you have to continue as a guest. Uh, again, you have to pretend you're going on a day uh, and you have to look at the cart and get a price. So they also don't have senior, that's just adults and Chicago residents pay half. So $39.95 for an adult. I was, gonna, I was looking back here, there's something you can buy a city pass. There's a whole bunch of these you can get and it comes as an app on your phone and they give you like, this one's $114. It gives you um, admission to Shedd Aquarium, Skydeck Chicago Field Museum. And then you can choose either the Art Institute or the Museum of Science and Industry or the Adler Plant. You can choose two of these four. Um, and there are different types of passes that give you these various dollar, these various combinations of things. I didn't see here that they have a senior. I don't think there's a senior discount for that. So right there for 114, I'm not sure you'd, you'd have to compare what it might cost. Let's say you just want to see two or three of those museum, find out what a one day um, 
ticket would cost you to those. That's the shed. Uh, I mean, a little bit about the shed. Anyway, if you've never been to an aquarium, you need to go to one in your at least one in your life. The National Aquarium in the U.S. is actually not up there. This is not in Washington D.C. It's in Baltimore, and I've been to the one in Baltimore. That is also a fabulous museum to go to. Uh, let's look here and see if they give us uh, animals and exhibits, the various types of animals. But look at this one here. You can see one about the Caribbean reef. This is a special exhibit. Uh, reefs are something we read about a lot, not these days, because reefs worldwide are under threat from uh, a warming global, a globe, uh, global warming and climate change. These ends anyway, like this, these are all the kinds of things that live in a Caribbean reef. I have a next nephew that, uh, worked on some sea turtle research down in the Caribbean on the reef. So that's the a shed aquarium again, worth a, you know, I don't know if you could spend an entire day there. Um, it's been, but plan a day or part of a day there. And then save the rest of your time to go to a show at the Adler Aquarium. So this is Adler Aquarium. Um, the, I'll show you the exhibits. Now, like all aquariums, they've got, you know, the planetarium, you go in and you can see the thing about the stars. Uh, they have that, but they also have a lot of other exhibits around. It's like, like it's a museum. Um, and so you can see different things in there that is really worth it. This, they've got a, a map of, you know, kind of an idea what the solar system looked like looks like, not looked like. Uh, also a great place to take kids, something, stuff about telescopes, all sorts of stuff that's neat to see. But what's here's um, Chicago's night sky. Uh, see what you're missing, okay? In a dark sky, you can see about 4,500 stars with a naked eye. In Chicago's sky, you can see about 35. Um, I'm one of those folks that would like to go to one of these dark sky places. That is one thing that a, 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 a planetarium and, and uh, can help you see what you're missing in the night sky. But um, at our planetarium, let's go ben, again back to uh, shows. They have a big theater, okay? So um, you can go to the Destination Solar System, and I'm not going to show you the video on YouTube, but you could watch it, uh, all right? If you follow the link that I send you and to find out what that show is about, they also have the, the IMAX theaters, Okay, um, and, but they have this globe dome theater and that's been there since I was a kid, at least some form of the dome theater. Uh, let's see, if you wanna get tickets to the Adler Planetarium, let's see what they are down here. Uh, individual pass is $65, that's all year round. Um, all exhibitions plus two sky shows for an adult is $35. It is worth those two sky shows. I'm not positive if you have to see them the same day you buy a ticket. That would be one thing. Is it downtown or farther out? Yes. Um, I was showing people on a map, which is over here. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, we'll, we'll find the okay. Adler Planetarium right there in Chicago. Late. That It keeps coming up with that. It is not there. Um, Carolyn, there's a little place. Not a little place. There's a place in Chicago down here, the, the Northerly Island, the Shedd Aquarium, the Adler Planetarium and the Field Museum are in a triangle right here. This has all been built out into the lake and south of it is Soldier Field. And look, you can, while you're stopping, you can go to Del Campos Tacos at 12th Street Beach, just in case you're interested. That's a bit of a tour of the Chicago museums that I was telling you about. There are a few more and you'll get links to these in your notes because really, if you went to Chicago for a week, you'd spend the week at these five and maybe do some other things. But if you want to have some time, there are some more museums that I think are worth visiting. There's the Chicago History Museum, which is history of Chicago. There's the Chicago Museums sorry, children, Chicago Children's Museum. A lot of cities now have great children's museums that are very hands-on for kids. Um, of course, they've always had those. I, I was a very hand, I like hands-on museums when I was a little kid. There's the Jane Addams Hull House, okay? She was an early um, pioneer in social work in taking care of the poor who lived in the cities, especially immigrants. There's the Mitchell Museum of the American Industry, which is up in Evanston, north of Chicago. There's a Lincoln Park Conservatory. 
and the DuSable African American Museum, all worth time. So if you want to go to Chicago for a week, go to the big five, maybe you could do the big five in four days if you combine some time at the Shedd Aquarium and the Adler Planetarium, and then leave yourself a day to do a couple of these museums, which are much less expensive, by the way. Let's just look at the DuSable African American Museum. They have an interesting, we looked at this last time, um, it is nation's oldest independent African-American museum celebrating 60 years. So it's been around for a while. Um, its admission is less expensive. I think, let's see here. Do they give the price? You have to choose a day. So we'll just choose Wednesday the 6th. And uh, let's just pick a time. We'll go in at one and we'll confirm that time slot. And... For a non-resident, let's see if it can now tell us. Uh, hang on, got a bunch of stuff on my screen here. In the way, there we go. Add that ticket, and that cost. Da da da. We don't need to step into history. Um. Oh, here we go. No thanks. Um. Looks to me like it's zero. That's great for general admission. That's nice to know. Maybe it's tomorrow. Uh, anyway, uh, that's great. Like the Smithsonian. Anyway, you'll get the links to these other five here. Uh, actually, at six, the Chicago History Museum, Children's Museum, plus links to the, the top five that I showed you in your notes. So in case you want to explore them later. A lot of museums do have interactive stuff you can look at online so you can get excited about going. Uh, even though, um, even though uh, you can look at stuff online, I really love going to these museums and spending the day strolling through them. Any more uh, questions or comments or any Chicago people there want to tell us, yay, you, this one was my favorite. I, I just wanted to mention, I, I read about this earlier this year that um, the aquarium is undergoing a multi-million, like something like 500 million. I'm not sure how much of that is, at least half of that is being spent in the aquarium. Um, they're, for their hundredth anniversary, they're revamping the thing, they're rebuilding it, they're making it more tech friendly, more light, more, you know, just more modern. So it's a, it's a pretty ambitious renovation um, going on over the next few years. Thanks for sharing that, Susan. Now that you mentioned that, I think I saw that when we were looking at the uh, when we were looking at that that website last time. Um, what the one thing about the Chicago museums is they're old, okay? Like she was saying, the hundredth year of the Shedd Aquarium. Um, they were built at a time when Chicago was a relatively young city, like sixty years old, but it was huge. It was number two city already early on in its life, and they and they and like the Field Museum. Have you ever heard of? Um, Marshall, Marshall Field, sorry. That, yeah, I was drawing a blank for a second. Was a famous, iconic um, department store in Chicago. And in fact, Marshall Fields was still there when I was a kid. Uh, that guy is the guy, Fields, who endowed and, and paid for the Field Museum. Uh, also, not a museum, but there's McCormick Place in Chicago, which is maybe the second or third largest um, exhibition hall in America, named after Cyrus McCormick, who invented the Reaper. Thanks, Susan, for that. I appreciate that. Thanks. Well, you know, and, and of course, I have to always come up with some, some downside, but no, I think it's what you said is all good. I think they're great museums. But um, I think the Field Museum also, and I... Um, I think it was supposed to open last year. I'm not sure what happened with COVID, but they were going to renovate part of it. And, and I guess that's the part I remember from childhood, the wonder and of all of it. And yet the last time I went to the um, to the aquarium, I thought the new part was great. A lot of it, I mean, it's wonderful, but the old part, you know, still had that sort of dark feeling like you walk in and you peer in. It's, it's very static. You walk in and peer in a small, you know, there's a series, you know where I mean in the beginning on the left and you peer in these small tanks and, um, I just, it is interesting that they build these huge things that are so expensive and then they have to be updated because people's change, you know, we, people's tastes change. Well, and also they're a hundred years old. 
So when you get to be that age, you do have to re renovate a lot of things. Susan, have you been to the National Aquarium in, in Baltimore? A long time ago. Yeah, that, that's a great aquarium to go to. So um, anyway, that's the class for today. Any more comments? Anybody else from Chicago or been to these places? Or Judy, you're up, you're up, in, you're up north in Buffalo Grove. You ever go down to these museums? Not really. I haven't been there for years, but you make me want to go. Good. <laughs> you did a great job. Good. Judy, you're, you're Judy, you're in Buffalo Grove. Do you go at least to the um to the botanical garden? That's not so far from you. To the what? Botanical garden. I don't know what that is. The Chicago Botanical Garden. Oh, botanical. Oh. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's um, not that I have not. I went there right before COVID, but I haven't been there since. That's a and very nice place to go. Chicago also has a beautiful arboretum uh, out in the west. I think those are the western suburbs, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. uh, so, well, thanks, uh, Ross. Yes. Two questions. Uh, number one. You hear a lot about uh, crime and uh, security issues in the Chicago area. Do you have any feeling for how the museum's location stacks up as far as uh, safety goes? They're safe. They're safe. That's the mm -hmm. safest part of Chicago. That's really in the core okay. of the city. And like I said, I took the L train in all the way from the airport down there and was just fine. There was a time when the L wasn't considered safe. Um, and maybe there are places that are still not considered safe. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure about that. But the areas that weren't considered safe when I was a teenager are now fine on the L. And even as a kid, <laughs> the loop was always the safe part of the city to go to. I, was, I want to mention also um, Lakeshore Drive going up north is just, there's yeah. walking paths all the way. If you're able to get to Chicago in the summer when it's pleasant and warm and not too hot, uh, walking along the lake is just delightful. Lake Michigan is beautiful. Just keep going. Don't stop. <laughs> <laughs> Russ, a second question. Uh, you mentioned you'd given a presentation on Detroit's museums. Do you have any plans to present that again in the near future? You know, uh, I'll put that in the hopper for get set up to schedule for me. I'm going to be taking three weeks off. Uh, you won't, no one will see me until May starting Friday is my last class for a while. When I come back in May, I will mention it as a class to be scheduled. We are looking, I am looking at suggesting to get set up something they call around the world in 80 days, where we take all of the location and destination classes that we've done and we pick 40 of them and we do all of them twice in 80 days, including mm -hmm. a few that maybe we don't have yet. But I think I've done somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 destination and location classes myself or with learners. And some people have said, "Why?" well, you all, I, I presume have enjoyed the museum class. If you're not a museum lover, then it's not something you would wanna do, but to travel to places to visit museums um, is fabulous. And I will repeat the one in Detroit, thanks. I also need to do one on New York. The reason I haven't done the one in New York yet is that I wanna wait and go to those museums again myself. It's been years since I've been to the museums in New York. I'm gonna go back. My daughter lives in New York. I'm thinking of going up and visiting in June, taking a day, touring the museums, do some photography myself, and then I'll pull together the New York Museum class. So thanks for suggesting that to Harold. Harold, I'll mention that's one of the classes we need to do. Great, thanks. You're welcome. Um, thanks for coming, everybody. I know a few have already ducked out. It was good having you all here. Mm -hmm.